Well, hello everyone. Uh, welcome to the Hockey Podcast. We are uh, live on Facebook.com, uh, YouTube.com, the Hockey Podcast. You can also follow us on Twitter at podcast underscore hockey, and subscribe wherever you get your podcasts. Uh, cold open today because it kind of feels like a, a death in, in a lot of ways, which sounds kind of morbid, but yet probably true. Uh, I'll just tell you my day. I woke up at uh, woke up for school at four o'clock because I'm do the I'm doing the practicum for news from six thirty to nine thirty. I was uh, listening to TSN ten forty. It's around six o'clock. It was Halford and Bruff. Uh, then listened again at eight. They had uh, Ray Ferraro on, and it was just seemed like a normal day until uh, nine o'clock comes around. Sean puts a message in. Meanwhile, there's some technical issues on TSN 1040, so I just quickly turned to it. Uh, it was ESPN or some American sports radio. I'm assuming ESPN because that's been their rights. And then tweets started coming out that the plan was that TSN 1040 uh, was going was no more. They were going to be shutting down the station. And lo and behold, we heard... And I'm just going to make sure that I'm going to do the share screen here and share screen. Uh, oh, frick. Um, cancel share, share screen, share screen, Chrome tab. Maybe you get this share. Um, can you at least see that? Yeah. Uh, basically, uh, basically, it was the. I'm, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna play it. It's too hard for me to hear. To be honest with you, it, it was basically an automated message, and this automated message went to TSN 1040 in here in Vancouver, TSN 1150 in Hamilton, and TSN 1290 in Winnipeg, thanking the listeners, but the sports station is no more. Uh, we are, our understanding is the launch in Vancouver is going to be a comedy show. We'll, we'll get into that. Uh, we'll also get into, uh, how we don't know what's happening in Winnipeg and we know that Hamilton is starting with the BNN Bloomberg and that's what we'll turn to. Um, uh, just to clarify on that, uh, from what I know, uh, what I've read throughout today. Uh, it does sound like uh, Winnipeg and Vancouver are going to that uh, their Bell's uh, co comedy channel, whatever they doing, and then yeah, Hamilton's going to Bloomberg. Okay, thank you. I didn't. I did not know. I wasn't able to see what happened with with Winnipeg uh, today. Uh, so yeah, um, and apparently there's a Bell Media Station in Calgary that's already on that funny channel or comedy channel format yeah. as well. Yeah. Yeah. So I just I just before we I'm just curious. Three of you live in Calgary. How many of you are listening to the comedy channel? Yeah, I, that's what I thought. Anyway, um, uh, I'm going to, I don't know where to start. I guess I'm going to leave myself for last here. Um, and maybe I'll start with Tyler and we'll go around. Tyler worked in the industry for a number of years. So I know that you'll give probably a, a perspective that, I, from a raw emotional point, cannot get to at this point. I'll be honest with you. I know there's going to be some things that you say that I'm, I'm not going to like, but I'll, I'm going to hear them. But um, we'll we'll hear from, from you first and then go Sean, Chris, and then Devin. Yeah, obviously it's uh, pretty stunning news today. Um, when we heard about the cuts last week with Dan O'Toole and Natasha Staniszewski and others uh, on the TV side of TSN, uh, that was pretty... Hard to hear, and you know, I had wondered at the time, like, oh wow, they they didn't cut any of uh, buddy from the radio stations, and of course, well, we're obviously most interested uh, being Canuck people here, mostly that uh, you know as to what would happen at TSN 1040 Radio in Vancouver, especially being a station that did not have the Canucks radio rights, and heard that everybody was safe there, so I thought, oh wow, well that's that's pretty amazing that nobody lost their jobs at 1040. Well, turns out that thought was too good to be true. And today, just suddenly, and, and by um, all accounts, uh, um, sounds like 
the plug was pulled on them literally remotely. Um, the, the control of the station was taken over from Toronto, I'm guessing. And so if you're Halford and Bruff, you're just doing your show, and then all of a sudden it's off the air. Nobody knows what's going on. Nobody inside the building knows what's going on. And there it is. And if people are complaining about how harsh it is, I mean, really, look, if you're if you're the one that has to make the decision of, of ending a radio station, putting all these people out of work, are you really going to let them have a live microphone to say whatever they think on the way out? It's just not going to happen. Um, this is just a continuation of, uh, of years uh, of what we've seen in the, the media industry, and that is uh, trying to do more with less or um, just generally downsizing in the industry. There's a lot of competition um, between podcasts and other um, station formats. Um, you know, I mean, even satellite radio is probably having a hard time now with, with the, the podcast uh, world and streaming and, and what have you. But, um, yeah, it's hard to get the thoughts full here at the moment. But um, Bell Media is looking ahead at the future here, and they're saying we can't afford to do this anymore. Um, my uh, former colleague uh, who works at Global News, uh, Jordan Armstrong, pointed out on Twitter today um, the ratings and where – that radio station fits in the in the whole Vancouver market, and it's a very small share of the market. It is more than Sportsnet 650. So yes, while they were competing against another sports radio station and were doing better, they were still really struggling to um, get a bigger chunk of the entire radio market in Vancouver. You look at CKNW and CBC Radio. I mean, they're 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 pulling in way bigger numbers compared to TSN 1040. But TSN 1040 and all sports radio formats are. Uh, very high labor cost formats to run. And uh, the CRTC doesn't force um, license holders of radio stations to do specific things in terms of format. So Bell made the decision today that um, they can take that license and air something else on that station um, with much lower cost and still turn a profit. And it's, and it's just, you know, if you're a big corporate entity, it, you know, there, there's only so much sympathy you can have for the people that lose their jobs. Uh, somebody I, I used to work with uh, in, in recent years uh, once told me that uh, any, anything like this is a decision that's made because it's just business. And um, we saw that again today, and unfortunately, a lot of people are upset by it. You're muted there, Kevin, just so you know. Apologies there for the static. I don't know where it from I thought it was me, but it doesn't sound like it is. It's still there, so I do apologize, everyone, for that. But thank you for listening. We'll we'll figure it out as we go along here. Sean, you your turn. This does feel like losing a family member, losing a friend, um, because 1040's been around in one way or another for 20 years, and. I'm actually the only one who hasn't lived or been a part of the, the that their uh, their radio network uh, area. Uh, Devin lived in Vancouver for a while. Chris lived in Vancouver for a while. You've got uh, Kevin and, and and Tyler who uh, are are in BC and and Kevin's in, in Vancouver. Um, but I, being a Canucks fan in Calgary, I relied on them a lot. Uh, for my Canucks content, uh, I would stream their stream them. I would uh, download their their podcasts uh, afterwards. I would um, just li listen to as many clips as possible. Um, and then, yeah, this this morning I was I wasn't listening at the time. I was trying to decompress because, well, it's been, it's an emotional time to be a Canucks fan right now. Um, but uh, so I I tried if if I'm not in a good mood i try not to listen uh too too early in the morning because then i it just I'm, I'm an emotional person so it ruins my day so i have to find a way to avoid that but then i saw it i saw it on twitter that people were um uh that that uh, someone noticed noticed that they had gone off air basically they had uh, switched from uh, uh, at a commercial break they switched from the live 1040 feed to espn uh, and then I think there was, I saw a few jokes here and there, and then I saw the, the bomb drop that, uh, that they were shutting things down and it just sucks because you said they've been there for years. And I remember listening to 
the post game after 2011. I remember listening to pre games, post games all all day. Um, whether it was Halford and Bruff, who who basically became my morning show, um, whether it was Sakaris and Price uh, that I would listen to on my way home from work, um, I would. Listen to a lot. I listened to a lot of 1040 over the years, and it, it, it really sucks. I understand the business side of it, um, that there is an issue, and radio is struggling, um, because of the the eh, because everything's more going more online now, so it, it's, it's a tough market. Just like they're trying to figure their way out, just like, um, uh, journal like written journalism as well. So, we need to, I, I I'm I'm at the point where I have decompressed enough out of it that I totally expect um, at least a few of these these people um, that were working for uh, 1040 to come back in some way or another, uh, whether it's on another radio station or if they start something up on their own. Uh, you have to remember that this wasn't a Bell station to start. This was a station, or, may, or I can't remember exactly, but it started up as a small station to compete against another another state another uh, like sports or lifestyle um station in vancouver the mojo or whatever it was called um and they they know how to they, they've got people who have been there since the beginning and know what it takes to do to start uh to do that so hopefully that we we aren't without the the likes of halford gruff rick dollywall uh, front and uh, Sakaris and Price for too long. Let alone uh, Vancouver, uh, Vancouver media legend Don Taylor, um, as they've been around forever. Sports page, like they're they're coming back in in some way or another. And I just, I, I that's the one thing I, I can put solace into is that I know they're coming back. Chris, sorry. Yeah, as far as uh, my take, like I, I, I've been dwelling on this all day, and I almost still don't have much words to to say other than just like expressing frustration and disappointment. Um, I sent out a tweet earlier, just being like trying to be positive about it and like share some good memories and whatnot. So I shared a memory of where I actually had won a contest back in two thousand nine, got lower bowl tickets for uh, round one versus the Blackhawks. Ended up being a loss, but still, just the fact that I won a contest through them was cool. And then in 2015, what just within the first year of me moving back to Calgary, I uh, the, it was when we were facing the Flames in the first round of the playoffs, and the Team 1040 was uh, broadcasting remotely from the pint, just on the western edge of uh, the Red Mile. And I went down and got to hang out with the guys for a couple hours that afternoon, chat with them during the breaks, and yeah, it was really cool. And I yeah, as far as just the general news, it, it other than just saying I'm disappointed and upset, like the fact that Bell, as a overall corporate entity, made a profit of over a hundred million dollars last year. Sorry, several hundred million dollars last year, and then took over a hundred million dollars in subsidies from the Canadian government and still made these cuts. I think that's what doesn't sit with me very well more than anything else. You can't take government money and then claim, oh, we're not making a profit and cut costs. Like, I can understand if you're in the red and you need to cut costs. Yeah, that makes sense as, from a business standpoint. But if you're relying on government money and then you still make maybe not record profits but substantial profits you shouldn't be doing shit like this so i i, I guess that's all i really have to say at the moment yeah it's <laughs> it's disappointing um me not even being a canucks fan i uh i relied on them um whenever there was a lull in the uh another market and so I, I listened to calgary radio i listened to toronto radio um but uh, i also did listen to vancouver radio and they uh help and Bruff um were, were a big part of that and uh it's it's sad to 
see them leave in this fashion. Um, it's disappointing of Bell Media to do this right after um, Bell is Talk Day uh, and getting that pub pub well pub wow, uh, pub oh my god publicity <laughs> and uh, yeah it's 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 really really unfortunate for someone like myself who has struggled with um, uh, mental health and who has been at the very end of my leash if you will, um, it, uh, having that associated with a company that does this, it, uh, it doesn't represent, um, it, it doesn't represent that at all. And it, it that, that I like, uh, of course, like what everybody else has said has been, um, my sentiments as well, but it's, it's, uh, just, just having that a part of it really hits home for me and makes me just want to say, fuck you to Bell media. Um, and yeah, Chris said it too. It was uh, 122 million dollars uh, that the government got, or that uh, Bell Media got from the government. And it, it where, where is that money? How is that money being allocated? And there, there's no way Executive in hell. Executive bonuses. Well, that's that's then those guys should go to fucking jail. Period. With all with all of us, um, all of us on here, I know we're not. Uh, we're definitely not the the top of the top, the wealthy of the wealthy, the one percent that uh, uh, gets paid. And so, looking at it from a business standpoint, too, being the employee instead of the employer, um, being the small guy, it, it's even more a kick in the nuts. Like for for the people who have family, for um, the the people who are struggling with mental health. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, Bell, go fuck yourself. You know, in regards to the government subsidies, whether whatever the parameters were, whether it was to cover past wages or future wages or whatever the case, it doesn't really matter. The whole thing stinks. If you're taking money from the government and then you're laying off a bunch of people and, and, and cutting programming, that wasn't the, the, the idea behind the subsidies. I mean, that's basically doing what the CBC does and, and <laughs> but making it worse, right? At least they, you know, they take government subsidization and, and try to put quality Canadian programming on the air. And what Bell's doing is just cutting. It, it, it's infuriating. That, uh, members of parliament should be demanding answers for this, particularly in the places where people lost their jobs, such as Vancouver and Winnipeg and, and Hamilton. It's an outrage, really, to see um, what's going on here. And then, yeah, as far as the timing around the Let's Talk campaign, I mean... I've been on Twitter and have said that I, I feel that I felt long before that the hashtag was a bit of a self-serving exercise to promote Bell and, and their products. Yes, the mental health initiatives are important, and, and I, I'm not trying to take away from, from that. But, um, you know, how can this campaign be supported going forward now after seeing all of this? Especially in a time like right now, the past year has been the absolute shits for most people. I think most people have had some form, mild or otherwise, uh, of a mental health challenge, trying to get through this difficult time with, with a, a global pandemic. Um, people on this podcast have been struggling with employment. I'm one of the lucky ones. I get to keep working. I know others are not as fortunate. And sports has been one of these things as a good diversion for people, even in a normal time, let alone a difficult time. And now, you know, 1040 has just disappeared and left people, you know, searching for more answers. The, the, the whole thing stinks immensely. Um, I, I do want to talk further, but I'll let you, the rest of you guys comment uh, some more on your reactions here. But, um, you know, I, I, what I will get into later is I, I think there's some reasons as to why Bell has been harder hit by the pandemic and the loss of certain sports as opposed to Rogers and others. And that may be true. Um, but I, there, there's been a lot of talk in this industry, and I, I'll, I'll precurse this, um, this isn't the first time that something like this has happened. Um, I was actually involved in a format change that was sort of similar to what happened. It wasn't, it wasn't everybody, but it was a good chunk of uh, that crew that went to be a part of a format change. Um, it's, it's brutal. Uh, I, and it's just, it's brutal here because... It's just so inhumane to to do. I, I I guess you know on one hand you don't want to give somebody the microphone, but at the same time I have read everybody's tweet that has left from TSN 1040 
there has been nothing but professionalism and, and thank you and gratefulness and satisfaction and appreciation to the market. Not a single one of them has went off on anything else other than a thank you. Um, I would highly doubt that professional broadcasters would risk doing something that silly in front of a microphone. Um, I just think that this was so, this was done so poorly. It was disgusting. It was inhumane the way that they did it. And that really just angered me. It, and it still angers me just how it, it, it's the only way to describe this is disgusting. I mean, one moment you, I mean, Donnie and the Moj literally sent out a tweet at nine o'clock promoting their show an hour from now. And they had that show planned out. Uh, in uh, Winnipeg, had a, a Calgary guest, Danny Austin, to come on to talk about Flames Jets. They had to message him and say that the we had to cancel, that, and they didn't get into why. It, it's just like you literally, you had this plan. It's obvious to me that there was a plan that you were going to change this format. This you, No one woke up this day and said, hey, I think we're going to do a comedy uh, station. What an idea. Let's do that today. No. Like, there was a plan. And the fact that this wasn't communicated to the staff is deplorable. And I'm sorry, I'm on that boat. I, I will tell you, I've canceled my TSN subscription. I've canceled my Crave subscription. And I refuse to give Bell any, a penny of my fortune, any of my fortune, which is not a fortune, by the way, but whatever. Um, I'm not, I refuse to give him any money. And I refuse to support this Bell Let's Talk campaign. It's a sham. It's, it's. If you are treating employees the way that you treated employees, you have no place to talk about mental health. You you are disqualified from the conversation, actually. Yeah, and if you and I'll tell you, Bell, I'm gonna say this. If you tweet one Bell Let's Talk hashtag next year, I am calling you out. I will publicly tweet and embarrass you for it. Because you don't get you are disqualified from the conversation of mental health. You don't get one iota of a conversation of it. I don't give a fuck if you bring a celebrity in. You don't get to do it at all. You're out. I think that point you made, Kevin, about voting with your wallet's important. I mean, that, it's 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 fine for people to you know to take a platform like this or Twitter or, or whatever and complain about Bell and say that they're bad people and blah blah blah. But it, you know, unless you unless you actually vote with your wallet and cancel your subscriptions and and make them feel it where it really counts, then you don't really have a say. So I think that's important. I'm glad that you bring up that point. Um, but yeah, and then it's amazing, you know, as far as, uh, employees having any heads up, I mean, it, it sounds like even at the program director level locally, that it that was a blindsided move. Trevor well. Martin's had no idea. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Team, so, team Martin was blindsided. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, it's, you know, if, if the program director doesn't know it's coming, it's, it's, uh, you know, wow. What a, what a swift course of action that was. Of course they had a plan. They probably, you know, there's probably only maybe two to three people in the company that knew about it for plausible deniability purposes. And for whatever reason they decided today was the time to pull the trigger. Yeah. I, if, if you want to know what it was like to work for, uh, uh, TSN Bell. Um, go uh, if you're on Twitter, go follow Grady Sass and go read what he's been saying all all day today. Um, he's been very vocal about um, what his experience was, and yeah, I think you, you need to if you're if you're a questionist at all. Um, sometimes that is that is regional, but I think at this point it's not. Uh, let's let's look at Rob Fay. Uh, he went in on his day off on Saturday after that deplorable um, game from the Canucks on Saturday, just so that people would have an outlet, because that's what some of this is. Is is why why T T TSN 1040 was and Team 1040 was so important to so many people it gave it gave us outlets and gave us a way to work through wins and losses and all the sports news so rob fay goes in this decision had to have been in the in the works for a while because it takes because the, the 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 amount of uh paperwork and everything that needs to and logistics that needs to be in place 
means that this this decision was probably made at the very latest early last week and then they so they they didn't let trevor martins know so he when when rob fay out of his own volition because that's what he did he went out of his own volition to come in on a saturday and and talk canucks hockey and then they do this and rob fay had to beg trevor martins to actually do the the show uh, Trevor Martins was tweeted about that on Saturdays. Like, I'm, okay, I'm getting pressured. Rob Fay is coming in. Mm-hmm. Like, it wasn't like Trevor asked Rob Fay to come in. Rob Fay asked Trevor Martins, "Can I come in to do this show?" Which tells me the passion of what people wanted to do for this for the for the broadcast. Yeah, it tells you me. The, talk- Sorry. It tells me. Yeah, I was just gonna say. I, I was gonna say is that you can. That is the passion that these people brought to their job every day. I mean, Rick Dollywall, sorry, Chris, I'll get to you, but I, I got it. We got to tell this Rick Dollywall story when he was on the podcast. It was like he got a scoop at three o'clock in the morning of Sven Barchi. This guy, like, literally worked 24 7 to get Canucks content. And Sat Shaw on 650, who did a great job, by the way, addressing this, said that so helped them in terms of what they could do in terms of content the content that they needed to do. Because he looked at what Dolly Wall was doing. It's like, I need that kind of scoop. Yeah, I looked at Moj's, what Moj got. I need that scoop. I looked what Sakara's got. I need that scoop too. It just, it raised the level of competition and content here. Absolutely. And, like, it's just flabbergasting to me. Go ahead, Chris. I'm going to say something yeah. stupid in a second. I was going to bring up, you want to talk about mental health, even outside of the Bell Let's Talk bullshit. Post game shows for Canucks fans is a mental health exercise, good or bad. Tanvir from Surrey specifically uses the post game show as his way of exercising his sanity and keeping his mental health in check. I think anyone who's ever listened to a post game show knows exactly what I'm talking about. He he he. Whenever he needed to get something off his chest, he called into that line and vented his, his like whatever he needed to say. Mm-hmm. And uh, going back to Bell Let's Talk, because I kind of wanted to jump in on that earlier, you can see the tide kind of changing, that there was more uh, uh, anti-sentiment towards it, uh, that it was looking more and more corporate year after year. But uh, the first reaction I had this morning, like the first tweet that I sent in regards to this was, any goodwill that Bell has built up over the last five or so years that Bell Let's Talk has existed, they absolutely decimated it by this move. Like you can't pretend to talk that you give a shit about mental health and then blindside people like this. Yeah, you know, and and, uh, we talked about Dan O'Toole briefly on the weekend. And I mean, there's a guy that's been pretty open about having some mental health challenges. And since he's been laid off, uh, if you follow him on Instagram, uh, some of the posts that he's, he's put on there, uh, let's just say, have me a little bit concerned about whether he's headed for a dark place or what's going on. God bless you, Dan. I hope you're going to do all right. But, um, you know, boy, if he's taking it hard and he's, he was a guy that, you know, probably has a few bucks in the bank and is going to be all right for a while. You, you, what about all the other people laid off that, like Kevin said, to put their heart and soul into this thing, blood, sweat, and tears, all hours on call all the time you know, not making a lot of money in the process. And now they're, they're literally left out in the cold in February. It's just, it's just fucking incredible. Like that, that, that it would be like this. I know there's no really good time to do it. Um, but at the very least, can we not have the robo voice? Can we please have someone at TSN leadership, you know, I, whether it's Stu Johnson or some, or somebody at, at the higher ups at TSN or Bell Media come out and face the public with this? That's the gutless part about it for me it, is it's not the timing. It's not the swiftness. It's not taking the microphones away from people because I, you know, I just I'll, I'll bring up a past example as to why that probably shouldn't be done in a second here. But the lack of leadership from from Bell on this one is what really I think will leave a sour taste in the mouths of a lot of people, particularly the ones that uh, had been there a long time and were very um, good ambassadors for TSN. And uh, you know they got they're just uh, they're, they're looking for a job now. And as far as finding a job, I mean. I don't see a very many of them landing at Sportsnet. Quite honestly, if you're Sportsnet, how can you be hiring people right now? 
I, I you know, it's like it, it, it's a tough climate for them too. So I don't see it. Now the example of to you know why you maybe don't want to let the people have the air. You guys remember Dan Russell Sports Talk on CKNW? Of course, that was the beginnings in BC of you know people having a chance to call in after the game and, and vent and get their mental health exercise after a loss or a win or whatever. Um, the CKNW decided to cancel that show, and they did give him uh, one last show to wrap it up. And uh, I was surprised by that. Even Dan was himself. He came on the air expecting and said that he expected to show up at, uh, at 700 West Georgia there, where I used to work, and the access card not work. <laughs> Kevin, you remember the access cards? Oh, right. I remember the access yeah. card. Yeah, and and Dan, uh, you know, Dan was expecting the access card not to work. It did work. He came on the air, and I mean, he wasn't dropping a bunch of f bombs, but uh, he was ripping course management, <laughs> both in Toronto and locally. Some of them by name. And I think if you're if you had paid attention to that, and you're somebody at, at TSN Radio today, you're you're just like, no, we can't take that chance. I understand that from a corporate level, but on a personal level, that's just karma. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and, and I, I hope that Global or Rogers or CBC or someone does some journalistic questions and asks Bell Media these questions and asks him, what are you doing? Like I, this, like I feel like I sort of get this sense and maybe I'm wrong, but the mainstream media in Canada doesn't want to touch their competition when it's layoffs. They're like, yeah, it's not us. It's not, you know, we don't really want to talk about it. It's uh, that's we want to be careful here. But I think that there's some really important and uncomfortable questions that have to be investigated here. And specifically, we go to the money that Chris mentioned and Devin mentioned. If this was CBC, the Conservative Party would have been all over this asking what the hell is going on with this money if CBC announced layoffs today. There has been not a peep from a politician today about what has happened. And that's, uh, you know, and I know that in terms of the weight of the world, there are probably far bigger things. But I think that this is a question that some politicians need to investigate and dig into. I totally agree with you, Tyler. This is like, to me, you're, you're giving, you've been given money. Um, our money, Kevin. That's our, the point. Our it's money. Our, money. Yeah, yeah. our yeah. money. yeah. I mean, yeah. Andrew Shear was upset that a, was suspected a horse got C, C -E -R, the CERB. Why doesn't, why isn't anybody asking about this? Yeah, like, and it doesn't matter how much it is. It's the it's the the principle of it that that stinks. Yeah, and from what I know, what I've been able to, to glean from everything that's been thrown out there today, um, it, there's definitely some questions that need to be asked and answered uh, for all this because, as you said, they they reported uh, really good profits. They it gave their shareholders bigger dividends than. Um, than normal, and then they, but they also took that uh, that wage subsidy, and then proceeded to do all this, and it, it sucks. Uh, I, I really hope that we can get some answers here as to what happened, um, and because the that the wage subsidy is for wages, for the people, not the executives, not your shareholders. It's to keep people employed not to fire them and shut down three stations in this country. One of which was their second most reach, the, the, sec, the second behind Toronto, Vancouver, Vancouver 1040, reached the more listeners, the second most listeners in the country. And you're shutting that down. That says more about what, how, the, how, the, how everything's set up and, and run there in terms of the money side, then it says about what they're trying to do here. And they're being lazy with this decision. Yeah. That's and, what they're doing. And that's the other thing that I want to, I also want to bring up too, is, is, you know, I know that people are, are spreading the ratings things around and, you know, I get it, but that's on bell. Actually, you have made a decision, especially in TV. And I'll reiterate this Sportsnet too. They're, there is 11 television stations sports for sports in this country. And we only seem to get, there is no very little original programming, very little that we have had that is Canadian. We've had Tim and Sid, which is going away also, by the way. Um, we had Overdrive, but there has been no development of actual 
content across this country. And I know, Tyler, you said on the weekend that we they, they tried. I think that there's been other opportunities that they have missed and completely have dropped the ball on. And that's that's on Bell as a decision in terms of what they have created for content. If you are going, going to spend 45 minutes talking about Toronto on a national sports network, I'm sorry, I'm going to turn it off. I'm not going to listen to it. I, I can go somewhere else to, to, to find my Vancouver or Calgary content. Um, there's opportunities to develop people. Um, I, before you respond, Tyler, I was listening to Bob McCowan interview Nelson Millman, and I do recommend that people listen to both parts of that because yes. they talked about the future of sports. And it was really interesting because McCowan asked Millman how many people, because the idea in media is we develop people and they get to Toronto. That's the pinnacle. That's where we have, we were told that's it. Do you know how many people in sports that they've developed that they remember that have been developed from pillar to post from there outside of the Toronto market? Two, Elliot Price, who didn't work out. He had to, he ended up going back to, to Montreal and Andrew Walker who started yeah. in Calgary, went to Toronto, and is in Vancouver. That is unbelievable to me. Yeah. That's yeah. deplorable. Um, well, I, I would agree, Kevin, that they probably didn't exhaust all of the available creativity that, that could have been found out there to come up with uh, with original programming. But And again, this goes back to the point of the subsidies. The idea of the subsidies was to cover the wages, keep your people, continue to produce original programming. They've, they've completely failed in that regard. It's, and it's an outrage. And because it's taxpayer funding, there, there should be some kind of inquiry into this. Um, you know, that, that, that this is not what, what the intent was from the government very clearly, you know. So, so there's that. Now, I, I do want to get into why is it at Bell? Why are we not seeing this in other places? We can only speculate. I mean, obviously, we don't we don't have full access to ratings and and their books and everything like that, and we're we're not accounting experts. But not having a CFL season last year was a huge killer for Bell Media. It had to be, not just on television but on radio. And you think of the hundreds of hours of programming around that with a live audience. And pretty big audiences, especially in Western Canada, especially when the Saskatchewan Rough Riders were playing, you start adding all that up, that's a pretty big hit. Then you start looking at some of their other events. Curling, for example, they didn't have their world championships last year. Every year one of the world championships is held in Canada. It gets pretty good numbers for the sport that it is, again, with live audiences. And uh, the world championship, just like the national, they last for a week. Yes, they are going to do the Scotties and the Briar out of a bubble in Calgary there. But uh, last year, they didn't get the World Championships. They didn't get the World Hockey Championship. Pretty low-cost programming. They showed all 64 games, hundreds of hours of programming with the live audience again. And that's where your multiple feeds come in, so they could show all of the games, and including the ones that overlap each other. So you go, you, you start looking at all of that. Uh, again, with the, the shortened regular season, TSN was not compensated for the loss of the games that they, they air, would have been airing regionally. The bubble, all the hockey in the bubble went to Sportsnet, unlike in the U.S., where... Uh, the local partners got to at least do the preliminary round and the first round before um, leaving it to NBC for the second round and beyond like normal. So look at all those things and say, wow, those are some pretty big impacts to Bell Media that Rogers didn't suffer. Um, I would imagine the Super Bowl ratings were down. I, I don't. I, I heard that in the U.S. they were down about 7%. I, would, I have to assume that they were down for CTV and TSN as well. I forget uh, the actual number, but I did see a Canadian number. Actually, I think they said it was like the third best in Super Bowl history for Canadian ratings. So was it up from last year or down? I, I don't I'm know not, that. I'm not sure from I last year, but they said it was, it was a that. fairly well-received one. Okay. Well, in that case, then, you know, it's a bit of a saving grace for them. Would not have surprised me, though, to hear that it went down, just given that, it, you know, the team's involved and not as much big game feel to it as there usually is. So those are things that have certainly hit Bell, and they've looked at that, and they've looked at the losses they've incurred, and, and more importantly, they're looking at the, the next year or two ahead and not expecting much rebound in ad revenue, and they've, they've made the decision that they've got to cut their losses now. But again, show some friggin' leadership on this thing. Get me a real person that at the top to come out and explain to me and uh, the, the sponsors that have supported their stations over the years why you're making this decision. And and that didn't happen, and you know, it just it just it's just gutless. The only word I can come up with is gutless. Just the way the whole thing was executed. 
I'll emphasize a little bit more than Tyler is willing to. Gutless fucking cowards. Well, yeah, cowardly for sure that you're going to hide behind a robo voice. Yeah. Uh, there, there's also... Um, sorry, Sean. I'm just going to interject go here for, for a sec. Um, there, there, there's another uh, subsidy, not just a wage subsidy, but there's also a rent subsidy that the uh, government um, uh, is pulling out as well and uh once again not defending them but that 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 could be another um another reason why the number was so high and you know tyler did say it. yeah it doesn't matter about the number but um at the same time it kind of does when you have uh as many people as they did uh fire today um that could have been easily allocated to them and my one of the questions that i have is okay so you're saving all this money because the the sports climate is changing. Where's that money going? Where where are you gonna where are you gonna allocate the the rest of that money towards? Your 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 friggin' uh you know shareholders? Like where that, that that's one thing that really needs to be answered is okay yeah. Where 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 is that money? I, I, I it just it it doesn't make sense. Um the way especially the way they word it because it, it, unless they know something. Uh, some sort of you know, direction, 100% direction of where the uh, sports landscape and um, is going, and it's something that neither um, Global, CBC, um, and Sportsnet all of a sudden don't know what's happening, and they all of a sudden do. It, it just it just way too fishy. It doesn't make sense to me, and um, I just yeah, it, it it's gutless, careless. Uh, it's it's like you're you're dealing with a fucking infant, to be honest, and it's it's I I, I just can't believe it. No, we, no I just I just want to I just want to say, Kevin, I, I didn't want to speak before you, but but Devin brought up the point about shareholders. Having been a, a shareholder in a business here, um, I can tell you that when you go to the shareholder meeting, you are not interested in hearing the executives tell you that we're going to take less or no dividends. So I I get that. Uh, you know, that move would not be taken, but it is a move at, at the end of the day, it is a move the company could have done. They could have said, look, we, we're in a pandemic. Um, uh, this is challenging for everybody. We're going to forego the dividend or we're going to take a very small one this year and we're going to hope to rebound in the next year. And, you know, if that idea was presented to shareholders and they said no, well, then shame on all the people that have a stake in Bell Media, I guess. Sean, didn't you say they actually increased the dividend? I, I know that they, they had really good dividends uh, considering everything uh, that's gone on uh, over the last little bit. I don't know exactly what it was, but from what I gleaned, it was pretty, pretty good considering. And um, when you're making pub, when you're, when you're, you're making profit, like really good profits, like they were, um, and you've taken the, 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 su the wage subsidy or, or you've taken money from the government, taken money from your, from the taxpayers, you should have, you, sh you should be answering for it, and uh, I really, really hope that we can find someone. Someone digs into this and figures out what the fuck's going on here, because really, you, you just it it just doesn't seem right. And but the other problem is, is when you have such a big conglomerate of a company, they're going yeah, they, they're making money hand over fist somewhere, um, but they're not what what usually they don't. They don't, they aren't, companies aren't going to take their profits from somewhere else and sink them into something that, that they don't deem as profitable elsewhere. Um, I'm really hoping that we see some sort of uh, growth of independent radio stations coming out of this because um, it's, it's the amount of centralization and bullshit like that where you're taking away local content for national national content, which is actually fucking Toronto content, uh, is it is can't can't keep can't keep happening. We need places for our local sports news. We need places for our local regular news. Um, we need places for all that. And if you're going to continue to try and centralize and do that, and and take that away, then that's that you're just going to lose lose people and i think i really really like i said the, my only solace out of this is i know that they're going these 
there's going to be a group of these uh, uh, the people out of 1040 that are going to start something else up. I don't know what it's going to look like. I think there's going to have to be some major changes in, in terms of how they approach it to make it work. But it's the, the people are going to come back. And it's when that happens, I'm going to be one of the first people to listen, view, consume, however, however, whatever they do, I will consume that content. I saw someone tweet at uh, Myrtle uh, asking if they're going to do an athletic radio sports radio station. So who knows where that might end up. Well, th- th- yeah, let, I'll, let's put that here just for a quick second because I do. Sean brought up something really important here that I do think is 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 um, an after effect of this. Um, amateur sports coverage has been completely hurt because of the lack of local coverage. Um, like, you know, high school football, hard to get results for that. It used to be when I lived in Calgary, when Sports at Eleven was around, they did high school football results. They did high school football highlights, and you got to see that. Um, WHL, not, not. I mean, it's not going right now, but you know, that's let's let's go back to that. And it, this wasn't TSN, but the fact of the matter is, is that you had to do an illegal stream for Game Seven of the WHL Final to watch Vancouver Giants hockey, while the Toronto Marlies was easily accessible on TSN. That was a slap in the face of the people in Vancouver. That's that is. Utterly a bear. And Ron Tiago, Ron Tiago, the owner of the Giants, was furious with that. Absolutely furious. And he had every right to be. Um, curling was already talked about. Um, lacrosse. Lacrosse is a, something as it used to be considered our national sport. Nobody talks about that anymore. That's another thing that has been buried in all of this. Um, it's it's really sad. And like, if it's not Toronto, we've been treated like second class citizens. And it's uh, it's. And amateur sports is one of those that I think is getting getting a huge hit, unfortunately, and that, that is that is very concerning to me. Piggybacking so I, off, I, go ahead, Chris, and then I'll I'll come on after. Okay. Uh, I was going to say piggybacking off of that, uh, like Sean's initial point of like we need more independent uh, media. That's across every media medium, whether it's radio, whether it's TV, it doesn't matter. Like the fact that all these larger companies are buying out all the competition and centralizing all of the content, whether it's newspapers, whether it's TV, whether it's radio, you name it. Like it, it's killing all this independent, uh, small town, like sort of sport level of sports coverage. And like, uh, like Kevin was bringing up like that, the fact that that's not being covered at all is a detriment to the development of these younger minor sports leagues. And we expect CBC to be innovative with their money. We that has been something that the, the critics of CBC have said. Why are you not innovative? Why why don't you find another model to be successful? Why is no one asking this is a bell? Well, does, uh, we are now, Kevin. That's the thing. Well, thank I you. Mean, now, that, now, now that we just saw what happened today, we, it's like, well, what the, you're doing the same thing that the CBC gets criticized for. So yeah, I mean, I think we're bringing that up now. I, again, uh, this is not to try and defend bell media but um you know this was pointed out on twitter today and and this is what the bean counters are looking at okay um i have it in front of me here it's the the fall ratings for the vancouver market 19 radio stations measured by numeris um in first place cknw second place cbc radio one then a bunch of uh music stations 16th tsn 1040 17th AM 7:30 traffic, 18th Bloomberg 14:10, and in last Sportsnet 6:50. So, uh, you know, and 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 10:40 uh, share was a 2.6. So that uh, is half of C Fox at 5.2 and CKNW's at 14.8. So they're looking at that, saying, "Look, we we you know we are getting as as much as we can out of this format, and it's costing us too much money, and they made the decision to cut it." Um, I would hope that the the long term effect of this is that um, the powerful advertisers that were spending their money with um, with 1040 move over to Sportsnet Radio, and that they are able to invest in some better programming there. Whether that means taking on some of the people that were laid off or or doing something better, I mean clearly the 1040 brand was way more popular and way more established than the 650 brand. Now for sports radio, you only have the one option. So 
let's hope that long term that that option improves. But I, I agree with Sean. I think that uh, you know there's too much talent that was let go out there to just disappear into radio silence here. They're going to come back in some fashion, and uh, you know it might be the most uh, innovative thing we've seen in uh, in Vancouver as far as sports talk goes. Well, just before someone else jumps in here, I mean, we the obvious ones are here are Halford and Bruff, Sakaris and Price, Donnie and the Moj. Um, those are the and six. And J Pat. Those are the seven that I think everybody's like, yep, yeah, they're going to uh, be in. Dollywall. And Rick Dollywall. Yeah. So eight. those eight, I think everybody's like, yeah. But there's Karen Sermon, Chantal Shan, um, Andy Cole, Ryan Henderson, McClutch. Those guys are going to get work too, and they are very talented. Eddie Gregory, he's play by play for one of the BCA. I can't remember. He's Qu for the Express, I believe, all, yeah. the all the all, yeah, all the producers are really good. They're like, really, yeah. really Andrew really Wadden. Wadden. Andrew Wadden. Like uh, Tom Mayneck, you haven't mentioned him either. Yo, Tom Mayneck, the sports business was part of my that the sports business was part of my radio listening. Yeah. Um, he was he was fantastic. I learned a lot from that. So uh, Rob Fay, Rob Fay as well. I mean, it's just. To me, that is there. That is a lot of talent that just. It's, I did speechless. I'm I'm speechless. Yeah. Now uh, it was mentioned. I think before we came on, Kevin, uh, what happens to the the CFL teams that had their radio rights with TSN Radio? Uh, the Hamilton Tiger Cats were on 1150. The BC Lions were on 1040. Uh, Wally Bono, former coach and general manager of the Lions, was on Twitter offering his condolences to people laid off at 1040 today. I'm not certain that Sportsnet Radio is going to pick up the slack. So if it's a non, if it's not on a non-sports radio station, where will those rights go? Will that be online only? If that's the case, man, that's a blow for the CFL. Yeah, and not only that, you you got the Whitecaps, who's sponsored by Bell on 1040. Yeah, that's, that's going to be uh, real interesting. It, yeah, Impact, I think, is it was on TSN as well, is on TSN in Montreal. So they're not impacted. And I think the FC, Toronto FC, I'm not sure what radio station carries them, um, but I know the Argos were on TSN. Yeah. Um, so that's like that's very and that that Whitecaps Bell relationship is going to be absolutely fascinating because if the Whitecaps are smart and they need a PR, they need a PR move in the right way. They got to pull that sponsorship. I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and 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 I mean the Whitecaps are such a, a popular product too. It, uh, that will be fascinating to see how that goes. I I, I don't expect knee jerk decisions on that, by the way. But but yeah. Yeah. I mean, no, it, I I know. I think you know, it's a damaged brand right now to be associated with. The real question is, who would come in to replace Bell? Like, if you need a company that can drop that much money. So, like, who would be that company that jumps in to replace them? And I think that's kind of the biggest question mark with the Whitecaps situation right now. Well, you got to think that Rogers would be definitely up there. Um, if not, there, there, there's got to be some sort of background um, company there that could actually drop that amount of money and still be fine uh, and really capitalize on uh, the target. You got talking about a damaged brand, um, so you got to think that there's got to be a lot of conversations that would be having having behind closed doors right now with um, a bunch of companies um, that are willing to willing to do that. You know what? This actually would be a perfect time for TELUS to actually kind of jump up into the, like the main thing. Cause like, it's kind of like Bell and Rogers as far as like the big two, even though it's kind of considered the big three. Cause the fact that Bell and Rogers do all these sponsorship deals on top of their presence, this is a, like a golden opportunity for TELUS to kind of jump in and be like, thank you. Yeah, for sure. Um, and yeah, is there any, I mean, let's go just quickly go through the comments here. We have a bunch of them. Um, um, just show them quickly. I think so. It's sad that like work buddies who just got axed. Uh, Bell made it feel like they were struggling company when they all they run several major communications channel in Canada, ch charge a pretty penny for it, and will work their rivals to control dollars. Uh, we talked about this. I mean, Bell did kill off Bell Let's Talk for good. That's that's I guess going to be an interesting. That's that's not Bell Let's Talk is going to continue next year. It's just I'm not going to participate in it, and I will call them out for it, but. Um, well, you know, one suggestion that was given to me was just to hashtag let's talk and leave the company's name out of it. I, yeah. That's probably what you're going to end up seeing, I think, in a lot of cases. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, I wish they would have given us a warning, but damn, that was a real kick in the nuts for Vancouver sports fans. Absolutely. And yeah. the other the other thing about this, just to quickly, I, I just I, I a couple of friends, even at school like this was a gut punch for us because that is not because necessarily we all wanted to go to TSN, 
but that was a door. A door has been closed, mm-hmm. and it it's sucked. Well, and I, you know, I hate to say this, you know, to you, Kevin, but uh, you know, the, the industry was already a bit of a game of musical chairs. And yeah, I, now, I, I know. I, I now totally it just understand. got harder, right? It just got harder, right? Yeah. Like from, from a human place, it got harder in a pretty major market. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then the other one, just a cowardly, gutless move. Bell, let's talk my ass. Yeah, I um, mean, we're all feeling that way. <laughs> I don't know if there's anything else we need to touch on. I think we've covered pretty much. There's only so much yelling you can do. Yeah. I just, you know, again, just, you know, our, our hearts go out to all the people that were affected by this today. Um, you know, not just the people that were laid off, but their families and, um, you know, and, and to, to listeners that, uh, that really, you know, invested their, themselves emotionally into the programming um you know radio when it's when it's functioning at a, at a high level has that that powerful effect of, of pulling in listeners and you feel like the people out that are you're hearing coming out of that radio or like your family or your buddies or whatever and when, when you lose that like today it, it, it it's a pretty big void and 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 you know the, the reactions that we've seen are, are entirely uh justified and expected um, I just before Chris, did you have something to add? I I was on a bit of a thought, but I, I lost it, so we can continue on. I just want to give a quick shout. I want to give a shout out to Bic- Jamie Dodd and Sportsnet six hundred and fifty. He reached out to me to have me on his show uh, on Canuck Central on Saturday because he wants to create a relationship with Canuck podcasters. He reached out on Twitter. Uh, to to do that, and I think that I think thank you, Jamie. Thank you, Bick reached out and said a great job. Um, thank you for to Sportsnet to understanding that that is an important relationship, and to the Canucks podcast community and the NHL pod and Isha. I want to give a shout out. Can you give a quick shout out to Isha for what he's doing with the Hockey Podcast Network and Dylan and all of those guys getting everybody together, um, big or small, talented or non talented or whatever. You may like them or not, but I think what Isha has done is tremendous work, making sure that every team is covered and that there's a podcast in every network and that people can connect. And I would encourage us in, in the podcast community to do that as well. I think that we this is a time that we need to rally around each other. And, you know, I guess, yeah, there's, there's competition, but let's support each other because there is a lot of people doing some tremendous work out there. I mean, C4, Oilers YYC, Blasty Cast, um, like all across, Hot Take Hockey, like, Hockey guy, John Vivero is, is like, I think John John is doing a live stream, stream probably right now. Like, there's people committing a ton of hours of content, the broadcast, name it, you name it. Like, just giving the, like, and I think we need to start being more supportive to each other. Um, these monsters at Bell are soulless. They don't care, but we are humans. And they and just can- angered Canucks Twitter. Yeah, yeah. I'm really <laughs> pissed off Canucks Twitter. <laughs> if you score on Canucks Twitter, watch out. Yeah, yeah. We, 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 we made quite a management message. just got a bit of a break today, I guess. Yeah, eh? I think, yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah. Canucks Twitter may uh, may may fight amongst each other for ninety percent of the time. Has shifted, <laughs> but once uh, <laughs> once once we're you once we're united, watch out. Like I really do think that we're going to see something come out of this from everyone on Canucks Twitter here. Um, but as, as you said, vote with your wallet. Um, if, if you're up, as upset uh, about this as a lot of us are, um, and you have the ability to, uh, you've got some Bell stuff that you do not want to give them money anymore, do it. Like, I, I think you need to. Uh, as much as it's going to suck for some people who may also get the brunt of it, you need to vote with your wallet. And vote with your, list, vote with your listenership, vote with your um, content consumption. Um, I know a lot of people were there was the the, the quote unquote radio wars uh, between 650 and 1040 and how 1040 because they didn't have the the rights were a little a little more free to be as be hyper more hypercritical uh, of the Canucks and 650 felt more of like a, a cheering, um, but I think it's time that I think it's time that we just we give our support to 650 here until there's another option. There's a lot of really good good broadcasters uh, working working their butts off for them, uh, as 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 t- uh, Kevin said, uh, Jamie Dodds, Biff Nazar, uh, Sat Satir Shah, um, 
I'm a, a big fan of, of Dan Riccio and, and Randy Janda and their show. Uh, I find no they... more one chip challenges. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but let's please, please, let's try and support the uh, the, the local um, the local talent and and, and let, let let's let's try and make it so that we can we we still have a a place to go to rant after games and and everything like that. And I, I'm sure they're 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 willing to go as long as possible. But let's support them and then let's support as Kevin said, let's support all the podcasts. And let's support whatever comes next for for all these uh, these people who who lost their lost their their jobs today. And I want to just give a, a, a shout out to um, to friend of the show, Rick Dollywall, who yeah. one of the hardest workers you'll you'll ever meet. Um, and yeah, I want I want to make sure that we uh, he get we give him a, a, a shout out because he didn't have to give us his time, and he did. And he gave us one of our favorite uh, episodes we were able, able to do before we went video, unfortunately. But uh, he's he's great and always a uh, always always willing to engage with people too. So, um, and I know a lot of other people, a, a lot of other uh, hosts and everyone on there were really good with that as well. So uh, it, it really sucks, but uh, I'm really looking forward to seeing what's next for these people. I agree. Uh, some final quick comments. Uh, really appreciate you guys coming on and chat about the shed sunlight on issues. I didn't really think about as well. Uh, uh, I'm. I like 650. There's a comment that 650. I'm not gonna. Six, I like 650. I think that we've already su with support. That's okay if you don't. But I think there's some tremendous there. And I r just want to point this out. And we are not PR for a team or for a sports radio. We will. We, we will criticize when it's necessary. The Canucks. The Flames the Leafs and we'll argue when necessary as well so keep watching us as well how do we follow everybody I am Beardy Connect 3 on Twitter I'm on Twitter at T Noble T N O B L E I am at Schneids on most social media I'm on Twitter Gord House 09 and Heidi is Heidi Mazeballs I am K-E-V-U-L-E podcast underscore hockey uh, facebook.com youtube.com uh, as well and audio will be up shortly and thanks, everyone. And we'll be back tomorrow after the Montreal-Toronto game, the big North Division rivalry, the statement game, apparently. We'll talk about that for a midweek intermission. We'll be back tomorrow. We will talk to you all very soon. Bye for now.